Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Open Text Live webinar series. My name is Gretchen Wurgis, and I'm the Senior Partner Training Manager for our Global Partner Program. As this uh, version of our Open Text Live webinar series is presented by our valuable Open Text partners, and uh, I'm excited to introduce one of those to you today. Uh, just so you know that we do record every webinar in the webinar series, and you can refer to our opentext.com slash events page for both upcoming and there's also a recorded historical tab where you'll be able to refer back to this recording within the next 24 hours. And we'll have that posted for you, and you can share it or refer back to it if you need to, and you'll also be able to see other historical recordings and those uh, events that are coming up. If you do have a question at any time during the presentation, we ask that you put it into our Q&A or chat panels, and we'll collect those questions and ask them during the end, at the end of the presentation during the Q&A portion of our presentation. And with that, I would love to hand it over to our OpenText partner, Cassia, and uh, starting with Sean Murphy, and the sales director from that organization. And I'll hand it over to you, Sean. Well, thank you, Gretchen. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us this morning. My name is Sean Murphy. I'm the Sales Director for Cassia Content Management based here in Ottawa, Canada. Uh, for, for, you, for those of you who don't know, uh, Cassia is a software development company that focuses on, the, on enhancing the feature set of OpenText Content Suite. And we do that by extending or adding new content server features, uh, streamlining business processes, and facilitating user adoption. And this overall maximizes your return on investment in your OpenText software. Our company was founded in 2011 by three partners, all of who are ex-OpenText developers. And out of the formation of Cassia, several enhancement modules for Content Server were developed, including our Content Suite Security and Productivity Pack. Uh, presenting today is one of the founding partners, Alex Koalanko. He's a renowned implementer of OpenText Content Server. And Alex has been successfully delivering information technology solutions for several decades. With an extensive blend of technical and managerial skills, as well as extensive industry experience, Alex has a proven track record of meeting complex business needs. This morning, Alex will be showcasing our Content Suite Security and Productivity Pack module. So this module is for any OpenText Content Server customer that wants to have greater control over their Content Server implementation. So today, he will be demonstrating several features and benefits, including location-based privileges, greater collection flexibility, greater major minor version promotion flexibility, permissions locker, supplemental markings locker, extended auditing, user and groups locker as well. So there will be some Q&A after this demo. Should you have any questions that aren't addressed during the demo or if we run out of time and you wanted to see some of the features more in detail, please feel free to contact me at Sean, S-E-A-N, at CassiaCM.com. Okay, so let's dive right into the demo, and I'm going to pass over to the ball, pass over the ball to Alex, and let's get started. Thank you, Sean. This is Alex. Alex speaking. I am showing my screen, and this is the first time in history I have ever done a webinar for Open Text, although has. Sean, I do have decades of experience. In fact, it was two decades ago when I joined OpenTech, back in the old days when the product was called LiveLink. Let me continue with the Cassia product that we're going to showcase, that I'm going to showcase today. Okay. I do have a slide deck, and I do have a live uh, demonstration of each of the features. Uh, I can read this uh, toolbox of handy features, but let me describe why there is such a thing as a security and productivity pack. A number of relatively small features uh, are, are in Content Suite, and it's a great, great product. And some of them, as we work through the product, we feel maybe we can tweak or you know improve some usability. So this productivity pack is a collection of such features. In fact, there are eight of them, and I'll get into them shortly. Um, and I'm using the term SPP, Security and Productivity Pack, 
eight features here in WIN. Uh, this is my cue to go to the live demo, which I will do now. Let me go back to the enterprise screen. This is the home page for the Cassia demonstration area. In fact, Cassia does have three products. Um, the disposition module, the translator module, and the one I'm showing today is the security and productivity pack. So let me go there now. So eight features. Um, I'm going to go through these in sequence this morning, this afternoon, this evening. And I know uh, Gretchen is going to collect any questions, and I hopefully can provide some answers. So this will be live. And this is a module that's installed inside Contents Suite, like any other module. And when you install the module, you do get this About page. And the About page features that are available, configuration options for each features, as well as uh, some words which are supposedly the benefits of each feature, but we think they're beneficial. So the first one I'm going to show is called Allow Items. And the use case there is there's a feature in contents we call privileges. And I can lock privileges down such that you can only create a document or a folder, or maybe just a document, or maybe a shortcut or something for general users, because you don't want people creating all kinds of things that they don't know how to work with them. One of those objects is called the folder, and the folder is an integral part of what we call the information architecture or folder hierarchy. And maybe you don't want people creating folders just anywhere, but maybe you want people to create folders in certain specific places. So let's go to allow items. So in the allow items area, um, what we have in this particular systems, folders are restricted. So, a gen so I am Alex, logged in as Alex, and here you see I cannot add a folder because folders are locked down. Now, in Content Suite, that privilege is all or nothing, everywhere or nowhere. However, this feature allows you to open up and allow folders in certain specific areas. So if I click on the allowed folder, I can, add, I know I'm using folder twice, I can add another folder here, right, so on. And similarly with my personal workspace, I configure so I can add a folder there. And you say, well, how does that, uh, how does that work? In fact, if I go to the allow items, so each feature is individually configured. So the configuration for this feature looks something else. In fact, it looks exactly like this. Each feature can be enabled or disabled individually. Um, and this particular feature, I'm going to uh, allow location-based privileges only for people in these groups. And I can add one or many groups, same with locations. This feature is available in one or more locations. The types of objects I can uh, extend are, and currently we have collection and compound document, you see it there, and we're focusing on folder. In fact, I did configure it for shortcut. And additionally, I can configure it to add this particular type of item in a personal workspace or not, and work with attachments or not. So that is, in fact, the configuration option. I would normally look at the audience now because I've done training before, in fact, training for open text, and I would look at the audience and say, are there any questions? But I know Gretchen is collating those. So down here in the not allowed area, I cannot allow to add a folder. So that's feature number one, allow items. Feature number two, increase privacy. In fact, let's go to the about page. So are you concerned that users and group lists reveal private information? Uh, no problem seems to be our tag word, but what this feature does is you can hide users and or groups from the user and group list. 
So a user and group list is available here, but let's go in, inside here. So what I've configured here is that I can see all the users and groups and, oh, Sean cannot. And I configured it that way. So if I go to users and groups, and this is the standard users and groups area, and in the classic view, you can say find, and there are all the users. Similarly, find, and there are all the groups. Great. So I have that. So if I were to log out, and go in as Sean, we're at the top. So we're in feature number two, increase privacy. So if Sean were to go to users and groups, click on find, no users appear. However, I configured it that Sean can see groups. And, and maybe there, there is a use case for this and such that, well, when I create a security structure, for the famous CIS model, Community Information Security, security best practice is to use, or to use groups in any permissions or privilege type settings. So normally you wouldn't select a user. And maybe this is a way to restrict people from selecting user. This is also a way to prevent people from seeing who else is there, especially if you're in a multi-tenant situation where you have people in from different organizations and you don't want to show everybody on the list. How does this work? Uh, like the other features, I do have a configuration option. Oh, look at uh, Sean is actually, Sean does not have privileges to actually add it to configuration, so he's easy to read only view. So I see this feature is enabled. He can't change it. The groups are the people in this group are allowed to see everything and are allowed to see uh, users or and or groups, and I can select one or the other. And that's how that's configured. So I'm gonna log out, go back in as Alex, go back to feature number two, and if I configure it here, I see the, the normal view. If I were to uncheck that off, disable it, if you will, uh, what will happen is that feature goes away and the system behaves as normal. So I can toggle it on or off and I can set, let me save and return. That's feature number two. Any questions? No. Feature number three, extend audits. Uh, Content Suite has a, a long list of what is audited in, in areas. So for example, I would uh, drop down this properties and I can see, oh, uh, create and so on and so on. Uh, but what's new in this area, in, in this feature, is there's called an open event. Open events don't exist in Content Suite. And that's in the case, I, I, I want to know who has access certain folders in my in my structure. And this is interesting if you have a folder structure that represents an organizational structure or some functional structure or something else, and you want to know how often people are going to certain areas. So the open audit allows you to do that. And and the way this is configured, I would configure certain people have extended auditing, which means that people in that group will have these types of items audited with these types of events. In fact, there's only one type of item and one type of event so far um, in this feature. And where is this feature available? Locations. And, and do I want this auditing feature to get it down to hierarchy? So I'll have subfolders and subfolders. I'll also audit the open events in the subfolders. Now, I'm not going to show you this part, but you also have to enable open in your auditing interests. So this is a system administration feature. You can set auditing interests, and there is a long list of various interests that you can set. So I could set globally that open is off or globally open is on. And when open is on, this configuration takes effect.
feature number three. In fact, the uh, feature number two and three are, are the two newest ones. Um, in fact, uh, I put them into the uh, module over the past couple of days. And, and you may wonder, who thinks these up? And where do these come from? Well, um, they're based on our own experience and our experience working with our customers. Now, in fact, I would like it, perhaps as a follow-on to this session, uh, whether any of people in the audience have other types of features they think that would be useful. And we would love to hear from you on those. So that's why in the initial preamble to this presentation, there's something about an ever-growing list. Now uh, there used to be two, then there were three, then there were six, now there are eight features in this. Feature number four, lock permissions. This one simply allows you to block editing and display of certain users and groups from the permissions, I'm sorry, yes, the permissions area. So, and this is Content Server 16.2.10. So as of a certain version, everybody can see permissions. Whether they can edit them or not is a different story, but everybody can see permissions. So I'm logged in as Alex. So Alex has some locked permissions and Sean does not. So Sean actually can see all the permissions. So let me go over and log in as Sean. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to log in as Sasha. I'm going to log in as Sean. Yeah, thank you and go back to feature number four. So if I look at the permissions list here, uh, this item has many permissions. Business administrators have that. And you see that business administrators actually can't do anything. This is a read-only view. And this is available to everybody to see, okay, who has permissions? What kind of permissions do they have? Public access, CS administrators can do everything except that. Okay. There's a long list including people's names. Now, if I were to log out and go back in as Alex, Alex has a restricted view. Alex can see some permissions, but not all. So same permissions view, shortened list. So what the administrator has done, let's go to configuration, is to say, these three users and or groups are locked, which means that they're not available to people not in the group. And, and, it, and also, they're available to system administrators, but those groups. So that's how that feature works. Actually, quite simple. Um, so there was an express need to, to do that. So this goes hand in hand, I guess, to a certain extent with the other feature we had about uh, privacy and, and, and not displaying certain users and groups. That's feature number four. So Alex has locked permissions and Sean does not. Feature number five. Now, as I go down the list, these features become more, should I say, um, complicated or maybe esoteric. And, and certain, there are certain maybe smaller uh, groups of people who would, who would want to have these. Collections. People use collections to, of course, collect items, and that's a certain type of object and content suite. And in the collections, the way it worked was that you had to have edit permissions, permissions. That sounds, that sounds, yeah, that does, you know, you have to have the ability to edit permissions. In fact, you have to have uh, you know, the greatest number of permissions to be able just to move and delete a, a, a collection. Whereas we should be able to allow to delete, move a collection if that is not set. And that's what this feature does. Like I said, it's esoteric and maybe a few people would like it. But what I have in this configuration, Alex has the privileges only in the allowed folder. So if I go to the allowed folder, in fact, I have the same permissions in this folder. But here, I can uh, delete and I can move only in the allowed folder and not allowed same permissions, but I don't see the delete or move. And the way this is configured, I 
say that where delete and move permissions are, are located. And that's like which locations, one or more locations. Feature number seven. There's a concept of advanced versioning, which is major minor versioning. And there is a function called promote version. The promote version goes from minor to major. And in order to be able to promote a version, the user has to have the most types of permissions, that is, to be able to edit permissions. And the information architects and security people maybe don't want to give everybody the ability to edit permissions, and that's a bad thing to do. So what we allow here is to we allow promotion of minor versions uh, without that without that uh, restriction. So in this case, I have uh, allowed, I have advanced version document, and in the versions area, I have a minor version, and here I can actually promote to major. Hmm. And in the not allowed area, I have the same document and same thing, versions. I don't have promote to major. You say, huh, well, in the allowed, if I look at your permission, I'm logged in with Alex. I'm actually part of this group. And you see, I don't have edit permissions, whereas normally, you would have to have edit permissions capability to be able to promote. And this is a, a case where we don't want to allow that. So that's what this feature does. Feature, yes, I know, and it may be only three people in the world would, would, would need it, but maybe more, we hope. Feature number six. Feature number seven is the most complicated of all features, and I don't know how many people know what supplemental markings do. You know, I didn't know what it did that, what it, what it did last year. In fact, I never worked. But supplemental markings is a way, once again, to restrict access to certain parts of your information hierarchy. It's part of the securities uh, module. Now, there's a situation whereby you don't want certain people to remove supplementary markings, even though they are, uh, they have the regular privileges to do it. So let me move over here and I'll log in as Alex there. And the reason I switched is that I didn't prepare the demonstration on version 16. It actually works in version 10. It's the same thing. So Department X users only see Department X. So in the Departments area, I have four departments. And if I were to okay, uh, log out and log in as Department user number one. Go back to the same place. Yes. And you only see Department number one. That's how supplementary markings work. Uh, now, for there is a, a group of security people who can actually remove and move the supplementary markings around. And I have two administrators. Administrator A can move, move them all. That's the way standard content server content suite works. I, I give you the, the proper privileges and you can move all or nothing. However, there's a case where Maybe I want to make sure only some supplemental markings are fixed, and only a few people can remove those, and the others, other, more people can remove that. So, yes, I know this is quite esoteric, but let me demonstrate this one. So I'm going to log in as Administrator B. Trust me, Administrator A can, can, can move them out. So Administrator B goes in here to number seven, Okay, inside department, 
And department one is what we were looking at. So this is actually in the set security clearance area. So I have supplementary marketing set up. Now I'm logged in as administrator B, beta administrator. And I think, oh, I can remove that. And that means it removes that uh, restriction and I can update. No, you can't. And yes, it gives you a message. You cannot remove supplementary marking and there's an optional message I can put in here to do something about that. So that's how we implemented supplementary marking restriction. In the configuration here, once again, each is individually enabled, disabled. Uh, which supplementary markings do I want all or some? In fact, this system, I'm back to another system. I don't have supplementary markings or security clearance installed in this version. So you would not use this feature where you don't have it installed. But this is how, and, and the message. Say, okay, I can call Sean instead. Great. That was feature number seven. The last feature uh, came from a project I was on, and when you're working with a security model, a major part of that are the privileges you set. And there are a host of privileges in two separate screens, in, in separate users and groups. And how do I set up privileges in one system, and then I privileges in another system. So I wrote a little utility that says, I'll make my privileges a little easier, object and usage privileges. And I'll click on that. Uh, now this feature only works if you are the system administrator. It does, nobody else can do this. In fact, that's the way standard content suite does it. That's the way we do it. So that's why if you log into somebody else, you can't access it. So I have to go in now as the admin. Feature number eight, in one screen I can see objects, usage privileges, and whether it's restricted, and if it's restricted, whether which, which groups are, is it restricted to. In fact, the security and productivity pack itself uses the function privilege to manage which privileges are available to which people. Um, very simple screen. I, I can actually export this. No, it didn't export that. Right again. Yeah, export file name. Uh, some of you in the records management area may think, hey, this looks like something familiar. Yes, this is how RM exports uh, information as well idea. And why would I export that? I would export that if I had a standard three-tier development architecture, development, QA, and production. And I develop my CIS model in one system and I promote it to the other systems. So it saves me retyping and doing all the privileges individually. In fact, if you were to do the privileges separately, the privileges are actually located by the privilege. There, there they are. That's, that's the quick, but the, the standard usage privileges are actually object privileges are here, the standard way, same thing. I have to click inside to see which groups. In fact, this doesn't have any group, for example. Um, yeah, I can do that. And usage privileges, same thing. A second, a second screen various usage privileges, and security and productivity pack has its own stuff here as well. So that ends the live part of the presentation. It is 11.32 here. I'm going to go back to the rest of the slide deck and finish off and hand it back to Gretchen for Q&A. So let me turn down my local virtual machine, go back into presentation mode, and we saw that, we saw that, we saw that, we saw that, we saw those. So this is where we have Q&A.
Um, Gretchen, Sean, I'm done with the demonstration, the live demonstration part of the uh, webinar. I'll turn it over to you to follow on. All right, great. Thank you, uh, Alex. And just to remind everyone, if you do have a question, you can put that into the chat or Q&A panel on the, either at the bottom or the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, depending on what you have open at this moment. Um, and I do have one question waiting here. Uh, someone asked, what about Smart UI? These functionalities are the same, correct? I'm not, I'm not pausing because I don't have an answer. I'm pausing because I knew this would be the first question asked. And I, on purpose, did not show the smart view. Yes, generally, they we, they were this example. Um, I could show it to you, but uh, trust me when I tell you that one of the features where we lock down the display of a user and or a group, in the smart view, there's no similar feature where I can display users and groups. But there is there. There is a feature whereby I can select which users and groups are applied to my permissions. And yes, it works in the Smart View. Now, for those who are programmers and who know the API, the Smart View uses a different path, so-called the, the REST API, into Content Suite to get its information, whereas the Classic View uses something called Web Lingo. And only three or four people know what Web Lingo means, but that's just another way of displaying information. But yeah, generally a smart view works. And that's always front of mind because more people are using smart view. And I guess I have a question, maybe through Gretchen and the audience. Is there a way that we can poll people in the audience? I don't know how many are out there, but I would, I would ask for, for a show of hands to say how many people are using or intending to use the smart view die in the future? I hope that answers uh, the question. Um, Gretchen? Okay, great. And while we're waiting to see if we have questions, uh, I just want to let everybody know, if you think of a question after we've concluded, um, I know Sean's going to say some words here to conclude here in a moment. Um, he'll, he has provided his contact information. You can get a hold of him. But you can always reach out to us at OpenText at partners at opentext.com at any time with your questions, and we'll be happy to reach out and get those answers for you. All right, let me check our Q&A panel here. Someone asked, is this a licensed product? This one is not currently licensed, no. It's, uh, it's delivered as a module, and you install the module and you use it. So there, there's no licensing on this particular one. It's a very simple installation procedure. Okay, I don't see any additional questions, so thank you so much for your answers, Alex. Um, again, if you think of something after the fact, partners at opentext.com, or you can reach out to um, our folks here at Cassia. And Sean, did you want to say something to conclude? Yes, and also, if you had any questions for us directly, you can contact me uh, at Sean, S-E-A-N, at CassiaCM.com, or you can visit our website, and you can contact me through there.